What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. I am Grim from WKU Consulting and today we are going to show you how to set up and operate your closed loop BHO extraction system. This is going to be going in line with our equipment reviews. This particular piece of equipment is the Rainier closed loop system from open source steel with some minor customiza uh, customizations customizable options that I put into place that I sourced from Glacier Tanks. Both of these are Pacific Northwest native companies. I love to shop locally. I really like many different forms of the closed loop extraction system. However, I like the open source steel one, especially if I'm in the Northwest because of my ability to really hone in and dial in uh, a plethora of customizable options really that suits a technician that likes to handle his process or her process in a very thorough, hands-on, uh, meticulous way where I can really control every single parameter, flow, and everything like that to make any type of product that I'm looking to make. And in this video, we got a lot to cover. We are going to be teaching you how to set up and operate this system all the way from distilling gas, pre prepping the uh, auxiliary equipment, prepping the material for extraction, all the way through till we do our initial discharge. In other videos, we will teach you the parameters to go through uh, to make your shatter wax uh, crumble and everything else that you're trying to use there and maybe some oven procedures as well. In this video, we are going to be doing this closed loop extraction system only. So sit back, grab your coffee. This video is going to be about 34 minutes long. Uh, so I hope that you get all the information that you need out of it. And without any further ado, let us go ahead and dive right on in to the content. Guys, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, bell button notification for your boy. We share, and I've been all over the internet, so I know that we are probably the only channel that is sharing highly sensitive trade secrets, trade secrets to help you become a professional in the cannabis and hemp industry. We're never going to monetize our videos. You're never going to hear a bunch of nonsensical information. You're never going to be hit with a bunch of ads. The only thing that we ask is that you share and subscribe to the channel. That way the YouTube algorithm will also show similar people and we will be able to help you, help others, help ourselves, help the entire world in this industrial revolution that is taking place. My mic is going to cut off. This is a pre-recorded segment uh, in the laboratory, so I will be back to check on you from time to time. And this is how to set up and operate your closed loop BHO system. We'll see you guys real soon. This is an extraction bag, and the extraction bag allows us to keep all of our particulate inside of the bag. The bag is approximately 25 microns, which will enable only the oil that we're extracting from the cannabis to come through to, through the extraction process. Each bag will hold approximately two and a half to five pounds. We'll weigh it on the scale here. And the way that we're getting these loaded is we are taking our bag and placing them in an extraction column where we will load up our high grade biomass using a scoop and just give it a light pack, not too heavy, but we also don't want a lot of space in between the nugget material to create a good flow whenever we're passing our gas through it. These are our auxiliary chilling and heating units. And when we get here first thing in the morning before we can begin our extraction, since these are the units that are controlling the temperature parameters of our extraction, we wanna to come to chiller number one and we wanna hit the power button give it a few seconds for it to initialize, the circulation button, and then the snowflake button. So our parameters here are at negative 40 degrees Celsius. It will probably reach about 13, negative 13 degrees Celsius in operation. For chiller number two, we wanna come in and do the exact same process. 
we want to hit the power button, give it a few seconds to initialize, and then we'll hit circulation button and then snowflake button. This chiller is set to negative 10 degrees Celsius and it's what will run our um, um, condensing coil, which will allow us to recover the gas from its vapor phase. This is what is supplying our recovery and this is a hot water heater plus a pump. And so to turn this on and to initialize everything, the hot water heater is set at 115 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And all you will need to do to turn this on is flip the switch to on, the pump will kick on and it will begin circulating heating and chilling fluid through the vessels. Want to follow me in here and I'll show where they're connected. Because our auxiliary heaters and chillers are not rated for a class one division one environment, meaning they are not explosion proof, we needed to make wall penetrations and stack our heaters and chillers outside. The wall penetrations are sealed off by fire blocking foam to enable this entire thing to still stay rated for C1, D1 environments. Here you can see the penetration for the pneumatic air hose on our Haskell pump, which is going to allow the gas movement from our vapor to liquid phase, and it will be driven by a compressor, which is also not C1D1 rated, so it is outside of our rated laboratory. Here you will see the cold feed lines from auxiliary chiller number one and two. This is feeding our condensing coil, which will assist in the recondensing of um, butane and propane vapors back into a liquid format. And then our auxiliary ch chiller number two is chilling our solvent recovery tank to keep everything nice and cold and under a correct parameter. The heater is supplying our solvent recovery tank and our collection pot. That's keeping everything at 115 degrees Fahrenheit to enable the boiling off of our gas into the vapor phase during collection. Yeah. So to enable us to get fresh gas, the gas is supplied by the manufacturer and the manufacturer dictates that the gas is twice distilled. However, through multiple extractions, we have found that the gas still has some residual undesirables inside of it that we do not want to transfer over into our final product. So to do that, we want to distill the gas ourselves, run it through the machine, allow it to boil off from the gas phase into the liquid phase, and then we want to drop the collection vessel and clean it to make sure that we catch any impurities that could be left or transferred over into our cannabis oil. This is an adapter that will plug directly in to our supplied from the manufacturer solvent holding tank. And in most cases, everything is lefty loosey, righty tighty. However, with solvent tanks, it's the opposite. It's righty loosey, lefty tighty. We don't want to over tighten our brass fittings because the brass fittings tend to um, strip over time. So we just want to get it hand tight and then give a small quarter of a turn to ensure that everything just kind of snugs up really nicely. Once again, this is our hose. This is a 3 8 braided gas hose and it's rated for 300 PSI. These will be righty tighty. And once again, since it's connected to brass fittings and even our stainless steel fittings, we never want to over tighten anything. So we'll get it finger tight and then the same concept will apply. Quarter of a turn, make sure everything snugs up very nicely. From our solvent vessel, we have an accessory port here that's leading into the injection rail of our machine. We will connect this end of our solvent hose to our accessory port, hand tighten, and sometimes this gives you a little bit of resistance. So the way that you can remove that resistance is kind of jiggle your hose a little bit as you're hand tightening it. It kind of makes it life a little bit easier. Never over tightening anything, finger tight and then 
a quarter of a turn. So, because oxygen is both a catalyst for explosive environments as well as leads to oxidating effects like a red tint inside of our oil, before we begin to inject gas into the machine, we want to go ahead and remove any atmosphere or any oxygen and also the H2O and water that's present in the oxygen from our machine to create a vacuum environment that will allow our gas to transfer from low pressure to or from high pressure to low pressure systems. So in order to do that, we have our trusty vacuum pump here. And the same concept will apply. We will not over tighten anything. And we will connect our vacuum port to the top accessory port of our solvent recovery tank. Finger tight. Quarter of a turn, making sure everything snugs down nicely. And this will connect the vacuum. Now personally, as a, uh, as a technician myself, if I'm operating the laboratory, even if I can really trust the laborers or anybody else that's operating the piece of equipment, ultimately your safety is going to be up to you. At the end of the day, we're all here to make money and we're all here to go home safely and spend it. So what we always want to do before we start any type of extraction, even if it's just a vacuum atmosphere, is we want to check common items that become loosened over time with pressures running through them. All of our brass nuts, our connections, and hoses, we just kind of want to do a double take on everything to make sure everything is snugged up really nice and tight. And to do our vacuum hoses or our gas hoses, our 3 8 braided line, once again, we never want to over tighten anything. Slight quarter of a turn. Let me get the next part, Tom, and then you can, you can cut this and I will go through it. It'll just be long footage. For our brass fittings, we want to use a 5 8 socket wrench, a deep socket. If we use a shallow socket, the end of the bolt will catch on the inside and we won't be able to adequately tighten it down. So what we're basically looking for is the same concept pretty tight with a quarter of a turn, but we're looking for something that the brass fittings like to do, which means that they have reached their maximum tightness. And what you will hear is the faintest of a squeak. So to begin the vacuum procedure, we want to turn on our vacuum pump. You can hear that. We will follow our stainless steel line to our accessory port on our solvent recovery system. And we will go ahead and open that valve. We will begin to see the vacuum dropping on the vacuum gauge. From our valve, we want to vacuum, vacuum down the back half of our machine. So we will open to our molecular sieve. The bottom of our molecular sieve Red ball valve means stop, okay? From that point, we will come to our vacuum source and any time that we're opening or closing a vacuum, we wanna go from source to the end of the source and backwards to do is check pressures along the way to make sure that we don't have any leaks that we might encounter during the gas injection phase, which could be dangerous. So once again, we'll start from the source the accessory port from the top of the solvent tank. Yeah, you'll come over here, I guess. The bottom of our extraction columns. up to the top of our extraction columns, which are already open. Should have checked those. And then to the bottom here and here. 
Now, we don't want to vacuum gas out of our solvent recovery tank, so we're going to leave those shut. And we should be noticing vacuum coming down. Oh, did we forget that one? That's the one we forgot. Did you notice that did, when we were doing it? Great. Yeah, it's not good. So here we will be able to see the vacuum coming down. You want to catch that? The vacuum will drop from zero to about negative 28 millibar, depending on the atmosphere that you're existing in. So in higher elevations like Colorado, you will get a slightly higher vacuum than you would here. And we're going to wait until we notice an adequate vacuum pulled on the entire machine. So in order to close the vacuum, once we've reached an appropriate vacuum, we're going to go backwards to the front. So from the top of our extraction column, here is already closed. We will close here, close here, <clears throat> here, the bottom, here, here, close. to our solvent recovery system. From here, we will follow our red hose from the Haskell pump to the bottom of the sieve. Top of the sieve, solvent tank, closed at the vacuum, and then disconnected from the power. Once we've achieved a significant vacuum or an appropriate vacuum, we want to spend a little bit of amount of time monitoring our gauges. The gauge will be a clear indicator if there's a leak allowing oxygen to bleed back into the system, which will most likely mean something is not tight. So at that point, if we notice something is not tight, we need to go back through and find where the leak is, which is why we close the valve from back to front and from front to back. That way we can isolate each specific part of the system and if we do notice a leak, we can catch it at the source. Once we are finished with that, we will disconnect our vacuum hose and move it out of our way so that we don't have uh, things clogging our working space. Safe housekeeping is what the construction industry calls that. The vacuum gauge can be finger tight, but I tightened it, so. Once again, if she's giving you trouble, a little wiggle goes a long way. Slide our vacuum out of the way where we're happy with her. Okay, at this point, we are ready to begin the distilling of our gas um, mixture that we have here. For this specific process, we're going to be using a propane and butane combination, and that will allow us to do a bunch of different things concerning color and other things inside of the slab. If you need to know that gas mixture, you can revert back to the SOP. So we want to turn on our, our valve here. The very first two things that we want to make sure is A, both of our scales are zeroed out, that way it's going to allow us to understand how many pounds we are actually putting through the system. Zero that scale out, zero this scale out. 
The tear weight has been established by a technician to allow us to know the weight of an empty solvent tank. That way we do not run the risk of overfilling our solvent tank. For this particular experiment, we're going to be doing 40 pounds of gas into the solvent tank. So we've zeroed out our scale. We want to open at the source. This is the part that could get a little tricky because we don't know how these PRVs are going to react. We're about to find out on camera. Lefty Lucy, opening the valve. The valve is opened. Always watching the scale to see how much gas is coming out into the system. Okay. From the top into our injection port, which is at the top, we will go ahead and open that. Is our compressor on? It is. Much like we were running the vacuum, we are going to follow the line forward, we are going to follow the line backwards. Every time, no exceptions. So from the top of the injection rail, for this instance, we do not need to use both extraction columns to distill gas. However, during an extraction, we will because obviously both columns will be filled with cannabis or hemp material. However, for this specific experiment, we are going to be using one collection or one um, extraction column. So to do that, we will go to the isolated column here, open here, and to the top of the extraction column. And here on the gauge, you will begin to notice the pressure rise with the input or the injection of gas. Very slowly is how we open. We don't want to slam anything through. Let's just see where that pressure ends up. We might be okay. Oh, oh, baby. <laughs> It's almost 60. So from the extraction column, we will come down to the bottom. Open from the bottom. Open here. Our bypass valve on the side. And this will go to the top of the solvent recovery tank. Our flashlight here can be applied to the back of the sight glass, allowing us to maintain a visual on the flow of gas into our solvent tank. We always wanna be sure to check our um, weight instrument. And here we have seen that we have already put 3.5 pounds of gas into the system. So we're aiming for 40. When this number says 40, we know we have achieved our gas ratio. From there, we will open into the solvent tank, watching as the flow comes into our tank here. Make sure everything's holding pressure correctly. From the tank, we will go through to the molecular sieve, opening the valve, opening the valve, opening the valve. This is where the gas is coming into. We wanna make sure that that is always open. Most of the time it will be, but since we empty the tank, it is not for now. From the molecular sieve, we are coming into the Haskell pump. Opening the valve. The valve is open from the Haskell pump into the condensing coil, from the condensing coil into our solvent tank. Now we know that gas is making the entire loop because our, our scale that was zeroed out is now climbing. Once we have achieved this, also always watching our scale here, 
we're going to go ahead and turn on the Haskell pump, allowing the air-driven pneumatic pump to transfer the gas at a much ra more rapid rate back into our solvent tank. You're looking for a um, pump sound of about approximately 120 BPMs. So we can go ahead and give it a little bit more air. We're always keeping an eye on our gauges, our flow inside of our sight glass, as well as both scales, solvent coming in and solvent coming in. So once we have reached 40 pounds inside, which is all that we were looking to put in, we will go ahead and turn off the gas at its source by tightening the valve. And then we will shut the injection valve. The next thing that we will do to allow this to recover quicker is go ahead and isolate the solvent tank in and of itself. So whenever the level of gas has almost completely evaporated and we can see the pressure drop on both gauges, this gauge and this gauge, we know that we are about ready to stop the recovery distillation process. Now that we have completely recovered all of the gas during the distill process, we will shut off our Haskell pump. Close our red stop valve. And then we will bleed any excess pressure. Being sure to watch our LEL meter. Then we will disconnect the heater hoses here and here and unbolt our brass fittings, drop the collection pot and clean it. So now we are ready to load fresh high grade cannabis or hemp into our extraction columns. We will loosen the caps on the top 
using our 5 8 deep socket. Sometimes these get a little tight, so what we can do to release it is just give it a light tap. Remove our cap and place it to the side. Remove our PTFE filter so it, or um, O-ring so it does not get caught. And we will take our cannabis, making sure that we keep a firm grip on the top of the bag so everything stays packed really nice in there and we don't get any bubbles inside the bag when we're trying to load it. We will come in from the top and be very gentle to kind of massage the bottom of this column while creating a twist from the top so that no lumps resist us in the loading process. Next, we want to make sure that in the groove, we do not have any residual powder or plant material that will create a leak in the seal. So we will take something like a um, paintbrush from our handy dandy tool bucket here, and we'll give a light rub around the top to make sure that any particulate is out of the ceiling groove. Then we will take our PTFE O-ring and redistribute it evenly along the top of the column. Put the cap back on, making sure that our seal is nice and sealed around the inside of our gasket groove. Replace the clamps. holding one side of the bolt and giving it resistance so it doesn't feed back on us. Replace our washer and brass nut. And we want to make sure that along the top of the clamp there's an even spacing so that the top cap gets tightened down evenly here and here. Then we will use our 5 8 deep socket, tighten one side, tighten the other side, and make sure that our space is consistent between both sides. Once again, we are looking for the squeak. Once we have successfully loaded our cannabis, we are ready once again for the vacuum procedure. So now that we have high grade biomass loaded inside of our extraction container, and we have also distilled gas to a clean level and in a, put the entire system under vacuum, we are going to start our extraction process. Very step number one is we want to make sure that our scale is zeroed out and teared to zero pounds and that will allow us to monitor how much gas we're putting in. We want to be around two pounds per gas per pound of biomass inside of the extraction column. So since we loaded approximately six pounds, we're gonna go ahead and do 15 pounds through to just kind of overachieve a little bit. And the way we wanna do that is we want to open up our injection ball valve into our injection column. This will charge the rail. Then we want to open simultaneously both ball valves leading to our extraction column. 
and then both at the top. You will notice the pressure on the gauges begin to rise. A lot of people argue that soak time plays a significant role in the amount of yield that you get from your cannabis or hemp product. This is not true. So with us, we like to saturate the material as quickly and as effectively as possible because the longer the soak time, the more undesirables like your darker molecular color fill will come out in the final product, making for a darker product. So as soon as we have begun injection, we want to send it over to the solvent recovery tank. To do that, we will open the valves at the bottom of our extraction columns simultaneously both valves to the discharge rail the ball valve to the discharge rail and to the top of our solvent recovery tank then we will open our solvent tank and you'll notice the pressure coming in making sure to keep an eye on the flow inside of the solvent tank. Then we want to open through the Haskell pump. Just kidding. We want to open to the top of our molecular sieve, top of the sieve, bottom of the sieve, then to the Haskell pump. We will then begin to feed air into our Haskell pump. Watching our tank, once 12 pounds has been achieved, we want to go ahead and cut the gas off at the source. Now we are ready to recover our shatter. What we want to do first is add a little bit of nitrogen. Hand tight with the nitrogen bottle. And just a tiny spritz is fine. Okay. Disconnect the nitrogen bottle. And we are ready to get our slabs. Take our paper boat, bring it to the bottom of the discharge nozzle, and open the discharge nozzle. And there you have it, guys. That is how to operate your closed loop extraction system. That is all that I have for you today. We will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.